The common remotely operated weapon system, known as Crows, was once a mere aspiration of the military. However, modern technology has now caught up with the warfighter's craziest dreams. This revolutionary series of weapon stations is transforming the way soldiers engage with targets. The U.S. military has implemented crows on their armored vehicles and ships, providing soldiers with an unprecedented level of protection and accuracy. Crows is a versatile weapon system that provides both defensive and offensive capabilities, making it an indispensable tool. Designed to be mounted on various vehicle platforms, the system is equipped to handle a range of armaments, including the Mark 19 grenade launcher, the 12.7mm M2 50 caliber machine gun, and the 5.56mm M249 squad automatic weapon. Now more than ever, the troops on the front lines are ready to fight against invisible foes. Islands of Resistance. Field Marshal Eric von Manstein famously stated, quote, The safety of a tank formation operating in the enemy's rear largely depends on its ability to keep moving. Once it comes to a halt, it will immediately be assailed from all sides by the enemy's reserves. Decades after World War II ended, American military analysts were intrigued about why U.S. military doctrine did not contemplate a bypassed force as a contributor to defensive maneuvers. For one, Major Donald Kranz, in his 1988 paper titled Strong Points in a Defense Against Blitzkrieg, pondered whether a bypassed force in a built-up area or another strong point could have more to offer to the overall battle than merely being able to break out. Moreover, the analyst asserted that strong points were a part of a system and that they might be deliberately established to be part of an integrated scheme of defense. As he accurately pointed out, every commander tries to avoid the encirclement of forces, explaining that, quote, once they are encircled, the moral imperative to get them out as quickly as possible dominates all subsequent tactical analysis. Before any thought can be given to something like the web defense, there needs to be some sort of assurance the islands of resistance can survive. If they can't, there's no sense in deliberately establishing them, not only because it's not cost-effective, but because it's morally unacceptable as well. The right kind of soldier. Indeed, such ideas were not prevalent in U.S. doctrine for several decades, and for good reasons. The memory of the disasters at Arnhem and Dien Bien Phu still haunted U.S. commanders. However, as is often the case, survivability can be decisively influenced by technological breakthroughs. According to Major Kranz, new technology is always discussed with caution among military decision makers. On the one hand, the potential tactical impact of new acquisitions is complex and challenging to fully understand. On the other hand, technological advancements are continuously evolving. Undoubtedly, technological advancements in areas such as obstacle technology, anti-armor firepower, aerial resupply, and optics and sensors have improved the survivability and effectiveness of strong points. However, the increasing quantity and delivery systems of blast-producing munitions have noticeably counterbalanced any advantages. Moreover, the survivability and effectiveness of strong points heavily depend on the state of training of the opposing force, as well as its military doctrine. Critically, without real-world experience, the survivability of strong points can only be speculated. Kranz also indicated that it was possible to maintain a strong point for a significant period, but at a high cost. The major concluded, quote, unless the right kind of soldiers with the right equipment and logistics are present, and have had time to prepare their positions, a strong point will have a life expectancy measured in hours. Hitting the road. It wasn't until the new millennium that technological advances led to the creation of a new weapon system that allowed warfighters to engage in combat while keeping themselves safe. The common remotely operated weapon station, better known as Crows. The series of remote weapon stations was used in U.S. armored vehicles and ships to enable weapons operators to engage targets without sacrificing their own safety. The impressive weapon allows for on-the-move target acquisition and first-burst target engagement. In addition to its programmable target reference points for multiple locations and sector surveillance scanning, it also features automatic target ballistic lead, automated target tracking, and programmable no-fire zones. The Crow system comprises two parts a mount fixed to the vehicle's exterior and the control group mounted inside. The mount is gyro-stabilized with a full 360-degree rotation 
and minus 20 to 60 degrees elevation capability, making it incredibly accurate, even in high-stress situations. The sight package includes a daylight video camera, a thermal camera, and an eye-safe laser rangefinder, as well as a fully integrated fire control system that provides ballistic correction. Plus, the weight at the weapon station varies, depending on the armament module, starting from a light 163 pounds. The control group is mounted inside the vehicle and includes a display, switches, and a joystick to provide full remote control of the weapon system. The fighting crew can operate from inside armored combat vehicles, while still being able to acquire and engage targets up to 1,500 meters away. Notably, the mount can absorb about 85% of weapon recoil, delivering an incredible 95% accuracy rate, as well as the ability to track targets moving up to 25 miles per hour. Modern warfare had never been safer or more effective. Invisible Threats When it was first introduced in 2004, Crows was a true game-changer in modern warfare. Additionally, it can be mounted on a variety of vehicle platforms, including the Mark 19 grenade launcher, 12 7mm M2 50 caliber machine gun, 7.62mm M240B machine gun, and 5.56mm M249 squad automatic weapon. As such, the weapon boasts unparalleled versatility on the battlefield. Large ammunition boxes also enable sustained firing periods, carrying up to 96 rounds for the Mark 19, 400 rounds for the M2, 1,000 rounds for the M240B, and 1,600 rounds for the M249. The 506th Expeditionary Security Forces Squadron was the first to operate Crows in the Air Force inventory, and it first saw combat as one of three Security Forces squadrons in Iraq, mounted onto the M1116 Up-Armored High-Mobility Multipurpose Wheeled Vehicle, or Humvee. In the words of First Lieutenant David Boland, Security Forces Flight Leader, quote, Crows increases our situational awareness and allows us to see things we might never have known were there, especially at night. It's an asset on the types of mission we do here. American airmen took Crows-equipped vehicles on dozens of combat missions. Exceeding the human eye in range, the system can help the gunner identify threats that may not be immediately visible. Similarly, it often finds things the crew may not have known were there. Security Forces gunner Senior Airman Jeffrey Oates recounted that, quote, On one mission, we were scanning the countryside looking for threats and spotted a bunker a substantial distance away. When we approached the area, we came upon a cache of more than 100 pieces of unexploded ordnance. By the fall of 2013, the U.S. Army had over 8,000 Crows systems in use among the 1 and 2 variants. However, the newer Crows 3 would incorporate laser dazzlers to temporarily blind suspicious individuals, rather than immediately opening fire. It also features additional cameras on the sides and rear of the turret, further expanding situational awareness without the need to rotate the turret. What's more, it includes an infrared laser pointer to mark objects at night. From the start of its service, Airman Oates recognized the value of the remote weapon, which had long been a dream for generations of military leaders. As he concluded, quote, I believe this weapon system to be very useful for the military. It increases our ability to observe and locate the enemy and eliminates the threat of sniper fire for the turret gunners. Thank you for watching our video. To stay up to date on our latest content, be sure to subscribe to Dark Tech and hit the like button. And if you're hungry for more riveting history-inspired content, don't forget to explore our other Dark Documentaries channels where we publish regularly. Stay tuned.